In my last video, we looked at a poker application which had 52 buttons, one for each card in a typical deck. But this application had a problem. The user had one event per card, meaning that he had 52 subroutines. Now we compressed each sub into one line using colons to join the lines together like this. This is what the sub looks like when it's written normally. Now imagine each sub had five lines of code, and it wasn't feasible to place these lines of code on one line. Then you would have 260 lines of code for these buttons, and that's not even counting the start and end sub statements, plus the blank lines in between, which would push the total to a mind-boggling 416 lines of code. In this video, I'll unveil the magic of with events, a game-changing feature that will turn those 416 lines of code into one single subroutine. Not only that, we'll see how we can create our own fully customized controls like I did with the searchable dropdown. So let's jump right in. In this first example, I'm going to show you how we can customize the behavior of a text box and how we can apply it to any text box that we use after without writing any new lines of code. I'm going to start this from a completely empty workbook so that you can easily see all the steps that are involved. The first thing we need to do is create a user form. So let's right click and create our user form. Now for our first example, imagine we have a text box. So I'm just going to draw our text box here. And let me just increase the font so that it's easy for us to see in the video. Now imagine we want to prevent the user from entering any letters. So we just want numbers in our text box. So how would we go about doing it? Well, first of all, we'd view the code. So we press F7 to view the code. And then what we would do is we select text box and this automatically puts in an event, but we select the event we want, which is key press. And we'll delete the one that we don't need. And so when somebody presses the key within our text box, what we want to do is we want to check the key. And if the key is not a number, we want to just basically cancel. So we set the key to be equal to zero. So let's press F5 and run the code. And you can see I can type numbers, but now when I'm pressing letters on my keyboard, no letters are entered. So, so far, so good. But imagine I come along and I say that I want to add some more text boxes. So let's have three text boxes. Now, if I want to mimic this behavior, what I can do is I can just copy this and I can just paste it in three times. And I just make this two and this one three. And then it will work for them all. So let's check that out. So we go to the second one. I enter numbers. If I enter letters, it won't allow me. Again, I enter numbers. But if I try and enter anything other than a number, it doesn't allow. So I've got the behavior on the three user forms. So obviously, this code has a problem. Anytime we want to assign this behavior to a text box, we've got to create the key press event and the associated code. So if we had lots of different text boxes, we're going to have this code repeated everywhere. And of course, apart from just having repeated code bloating our application, the other problem is that if we decide to change the behavior, then we've got to change it everywhere that we're using a text box. And if we really configure the text box with lots of different code and lots of different events, then this will become incredibly complex. So the best way to do this is to have one copy of the code and then call that copy of the code from everywhere. So let's go ahead and see how we would do this. So the first thing we do is we create a class module. And that class module I'm going to call number text box. And within that, we're just going to start with one member, and that's going to be simply a text box variable. So we're just going to call it my text box, and that's simply a text box variable. So if we go back to user form and let's get rid of some of this code that we don't need. So we'll get rid of these two just to make it a bit cleaner as we're trying to look at the code. So we're going to get the user form initialize event. So this event runs when the user form is created. So we declare our variable up here. We can say private and we're going to call it my number text box as new. And that's going to be number text box. 
So that creates the instance of the class module. And now that we've created that, we can assign it to something. So we can say set my number text box dot my text box is assigned to text box one. And just to prove that both of these are referencing the same text box, I'm going to print out the name. So we're going to say message box and the name of the text box. So we run the code and you can see it shows text box one in our message box. So we've basically just declared our number text box variable and we've assigned the member of that, which is a text box variable, to the current text box. So that's phase one in what we're doing. Now the second thing that we want to do is we want to bring in with events. So when I use with events, what that is telling VBA is that my text box, I can override those events. So I can create my own version of those events in this class. And when the event happens, it will be called by VBA. So if we go back to the user form, I'm going to put a bookmark here so I can easily switch between things. And we'll get rid of this line because we no longer need it. And I'm going to copy this one. And I'm going to paste it here. And this is going to be text box one, key press, and it's going to run exactly the same. Now, the difference is that I have to assign it to my variable. So I say my text box. Now, what I'm going to put here is I'm going to do a message box and I'm going to say the new key press. And we'll go back to the other one and we're going to call this the old one. So what happens is it'll run both of them in the beginning. So let's run the code. And when we try and enter something, it says old key press and then it says new key press. So it's calling both events. The fact that this key press is in a class module means that it can be referenced now by multiple text boxes, even though there's only one copy of the code. So first of all, we'll get rid of this one because we don't need it anymore. And what we can do then is we can create lots of these variables. So we can say this one and this one. And we'll call them one, two and three. And then we just assign them like this one, two and three. So if we run this code and we try the first one we know works, so we enter numbers, it says new key press. So it says new key press, doesn't allow us to enter letters. And we enter numbers in this one, it says new key press and enters the number. And in this one, we try a letter, new key press, but it doesn't enter anything. Now we enter a number, new key press, and it worked fine. So the big advantage that we have here is that we've only got one copy of the code. So we've only got this code in one place. And any time we want to use this on a text box, we just have to declare the variable and assign it to the text box. Now, in the case where we've got lots of text boxes like this, what we would do is we would just declare these as an array. So we'd say one, two, three, like this, and we can get rid of the other lines. And then we do dim i as long, and we say for i equals one, two, three. And then what we're doing here is we're putting i here because i is the current one. And for this one, what we do is we do me.controls and then we can access it by its name. Now for this to work, obviously we've got to have a uniform name for all our text boxes. If they're all different, then obviously we can't run it like this. So now when we run this code, and let's just test that it works. The new key press worked. Again, the new key press worked. And again, the new key press works. If we look at the code side by side, you can see that there's not a lot to it. So now we've only got one copy of the key press, whereas in the previous version, we needed a copy of this for every single text box that we wanted to use. So you can see this code is much cleaner. Let's break down what we've done into five simple steps so that you can easily use them yourself. So step one, we created a class module and this class module has a variable of type text box. And this is just like a normal declaration, except we put with events before it so that VBA knows that we're going to create specific events for our new variable. The next thing we want to do is create our new event. Now we declare the event the same as it will be declared in the user form 
except that we put the name of the variable and an underscore before it. And once we have it declared, we can then enter the code to create the new behavior that we would like. So once this class module is created, we want to use it somewhere, so we declare it as a variable within our user form. We then assign the myTextBox variable of our class module to any text box where we want to override the behavior. And that's how we do it in five simple steps. And as we've seen, we can use an array if we want to use it with multiple controls. In this example, we've got nine buttons and we want to map each button click onto one event. So each time we click a button, we want it to return the number on that button, but we just want to have one single event. So how would we do it? Well, the first thing we'll do is press F7 and look at the code of the user form. Now the user form always has one event at the start and that's the user form click. We want to use the user form initialize. So we can get rid of the user form click. Before we use the initialize event, we need to create our custom button class. So we do insert and we do class module. And we're going to call this custom button, C-U-S-T-O-M-B-U-T-T-O-N, so custom button. And within our class, we're going to have a public member and that public member is going to be a button. So we're going to call it my button as MS Forms command button. Now I'm going to put a bookmark here and this allows us to easily switch between the code on this and the user form. So we want to create our private member here and our private member is a custom button. So we'll say my custom button as new. So every time we use a class module, we have to create it using new and we say new custom button. And then we can assign this. We do set my custom button and the custom button, my button, and that equals to the button that we have. So we've got button number and it's button number one. So it's assigned to this button. Now, just to know that it's working correctly, it's a good idea just to put in a message box here. And the message box will be my custom, my button and the name. So we'll just do the name of it. Let's run the code. You see button number one. So we've assigned it to the correct button. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to create our event. So if I double click here, you see it automatically creates the click event. So our click event is simply this, is simply click with no parameters. So if we go to our custom button class, we basically do public sub and click. We want to override this event. So to override it, we first of all set our variable to with events. That's saying our variable has its own events. And then we say my button underscore click. And VBA knows because what comes after my button underscore is the actual event. So it knows to override it. So we can do a message box here, message box, and again, my button name. And I'll put new before it so we know for sure that this event is being run. So if we switch back to our user form and run the code, we click on number one and you can see that it displays the message that we expected. So it's run the code in our new event. Now it's also run it in the other event, the old event, but we just don't have any code there. So let's get rid of this message box and get rid of this click event. So now we want to do it for all our buttons. So all we've got to do is create this as an array. So one to nine. And what we want to do is we want to put a loop here. So we do dim i as long and we say for i equals one to nine. We do a next i and then this changes because it's an array. So we're going to pick the correct one and then we use me controls button number ampersand i. Now we go back to our custom button and we see what we want to return is the actual number. So we want the caption. Let's go back to our calculator and let's run this code. We click on one, press one, click on two, press two, click on nine, press nine, and so on. We've looked at two examples of using with events to customize controls. Now let's look at a real world example of using with events. A while back, I wanted to use a searchable dropdown in an application. Now in VBA, we have a combo box, 
but it's very limited. If we type the letter A, for example, it brings us back the first item with A, and if we type B, it brings us back the first item with B, and so on. But I wanted a control that would do a full filter as we typed. So this is what I created. A searchable dropdown that filters by what we type. And then we can easily select. So to create this, I didn't overwrite the behavior of a combo box. Instead, I used a text box and a list box to simulate the behavior that I wanted. If you look at the code in the searchable dropdown, you can see that I did a lot of configuration on both the list box and the text box. So here you can see that I've overridden the list box double click event and the list box key down event. And if we go down, you can see I've also overridden the key up. So it required quite a lot of configuration. Now, if we look at the lines of code in the searchable dropdown, you can see it here. So it's got actually 253 actual lines of code. Total lines is 5A3, including comments and blank spaces, but 253 lines of code. So can you imagine if you every time you wanted to use this in a user form that you were copying all this code into the user form? You can imagine it would be quite a mess. But doing the code like this, as we've seen, using with events and putting it in its own class makes it way more manageable. So for example, if we go back to our user form here and we want to add a searchable dropdown here, it's actually quite simple. So how we would do it is, first of all, we get the searchable dropdown and we drop that class into our project. So now we've got searchable dropdown. So on our user form, we're going to add a list box and a text box. So this is a text box and we'll just make it a little bit smaller. And this is our list box. It doesn't matter where you put it, as it will automatically appear below the text box. And then we go into our initialize. And what we do is we declare it up here. So we simply declare our class up here. And then within the initialize, we just want to do a few small things, such as assign our new text box and our new list box to the class members. And then I'm setting max rows equals eight. And this then is simply just setting the data. And let's run the code now and see what happens. And let's type in a sword this time. And you can see that we've now got a searchable dropdown. So you can see how simple it was and it keeps the code away from the user form. So if you want to use this, you don't have to know anything about the code. You just got to go in, just add a simple bit of code to the initialize and it all works for you. And you can use this in any user form. This really shows the benefit of being able to use with events and to override the events and have them in a separate class. Now, if you want to see more about the searchable dropdown, I made a video about this a while ago. You can see it here and you can download the code for the searchable dropdown and the code for this video in the link in the description below. Now, let me know in the comments if you found this video useful and if you plan to use custom events in your own project.